Ellen DeGeneres sits next to former President George W. Bush at a Dallas Cowboys football game, and it sent Twitter into a frenzy. I'm Cheryl Preheim here with Caitlin Ross and Aisha Howard, and the topic today is can we agree to disagree? Can you have close relationships, friends, family, acquaintances, if you disagree on politics or social issues in particular? Or are there some things you just cannot be close if you're divided on those topics? This is a conversation getting a lot of momentum ever since Ellen DeGeneres sat next to former President George W. Bush at a football game. She responded earlier this week to criticism about that moment with the former president at the Cowboys game over the weekend. Some found it funny and odd, but others were angry with her because they say, hey, you're part of the LGBTQ community, and this is a president who for eight years enacted policies that limited rights for that community. So in response, she said showing kindness to everybody is important. But just because I don't agree with someone on everything doesn't mean that I'm not going to be friends with them. When I say be kind to one another, I don't mean only the people that think the same way that you do. I mean be kind to everyone. Doesn't matter. And if you watch Ellen every day, she says that at the end of sure. every show. So that's something that is very near and dear to her. So uh, former President Bush and his wife released a statement through a spokesperson. That statement says President and Mrs. Bush really enjoy being with Ellen and Portia. That is Ellen's wife, as you may know, and appreciated Ellen's comments about respecting one another and they respect her. So it seems like kindness and respect is really at the core of this conversation. But if you hit up social media, they are not buying it there. No. No, they're not a lot of people pushed back really forcefully on this saying that there are just some things that you're too different on there's no way you can bridge that gap and you cannot be friends with someone who feels so differently than you not only is it about Ellen and former President Bush, this is about people in our own lives, our mm -hmm. own friends and family members. There's an election coming up, and with that is going to come really heated political yeah. commentary. And the question really is, can you keep those close relationships mm -hmm. when you're figuring out how your close friends and yeah. family members feel? Yeah. I have a friend whose father is not allowed to the house unless he agrees no politic conversation around the dinner table. Wow. Uh, if not, they have to show him the door. A lot of people talking about this. I want to get right to some of the comments, starting with Becca Reed Farmer talking about, I would love it if most people felt this way and acted this way, which is be kind to everybody. Unfortunately, there are several things we should not tolerate. Hate and bigotry, I cannot give a pass to as a difference of opinion and merely excuse it away that way. Carla Weaver, another important point. Politics is personal when people's rights are on the line. Where would we be if folks had been afraid to rock the boat on slavery or voting for women or civil rights? She goes on to talk about the fact that, listen, there are just some things you cannot compromise on. And, yeah. and when you are part of those conversations, you have to draw the line sometimes and you may lose a friendship because of it. And I think it's levels to it, right? I'm all about protecting your peace. And your social media page is your page. If you have someone that really ruffles your feathers every mm -hmm. time or they get you all fired up and angry, in that space, there is the mute button. There is the delete button. <laughs> yes. You get to censor what you see on your page in your news feed. So there is that. But maybe you're on the dinner table, Cheryl. I love that rule mm -hmm. because we always talk about from the beginning of time, we have really just started talking about your personal feelings on religion and politics. Yeah. It used to be such a private thing and now people are talking about it. So they are. Yeah, they're talking about it so much more openly. But you make a great point on social media. A lot of people who responded to the question on my Facebook page were saying, look, I unfollow people, yeah. which is kind of like a secret. They don't know that you've right. unfollowed them, but you don't have to watch what they're saying. And that might help keep the peace. It kind of keeps you separate separated from those really intense personal opinions. I want to bring in Norma's comment here because she actually talked about losing friends. She says, yes, I have. It's sad. I was dropped as a friend because I voted for our president. Our world is so filled with hate now. And this from a person who preaches diversity only if you agree with them. It's interesting because I see another conversation here about how can someone ever change their mind if they're never listening to a difference of opinion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone, I just wanted to pull this up because it, it got me thinking about this. Is if you cannot listen to others opinions without judgment or selfishness, then you are closing everything off. Open your eyes, ears, and heart. You might just learn something. How can we ever convince someone else to think about something differently if we cannot have an exchange with two people with different opinions? I love that. As long as it's a healthy debate, 
and like you said, mm -hmm. hate bigotry, that's totally different. If you keep the conversation clean, I think it is a great space and we do see some good conversations happening and that's why we mm -hmm. want you to be a part of it. Go ahead and leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. Join us back here tomorrow, same time. We post these stories every weekday and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. Ellen DeGeneres is defending her friendship with George W. Bush after the two were spotted sitting next to each other at a Dallas Cowboys football game. Here's what she had to say to the critics. People were upset. They thought, why is a gay Hollywood liberal sitting next to a conservative Republican president? Didn't even notice I'm holding the brand new iPhone 11. And, um, <laughs> but a lot of people were mad, and they did what people do when they're mad. They tweet. And, uh, but here's one tweet that I loved. This uh, person says, Ellen and George Bush together makes me have faith in America again. And, um, But just because I don't agree with someone on everything doesn't mean that I'm not going to be friends with them. When I say be kind to one another, I don't mean only the people that think the same way that you do. I mean be kind to everyone. Doesn't matter. Wow, what a great hmm. message there. Ellen joked the hardest part about sitting at a Cowboys game and the owner's box is that she is a fan of the Green Bay <laughs> Packers. It was a good video. We were invited. Uh, I was, you know, I was aware that it, I was going to be surrounded with people from very different views and beliefs. And I'm not talking about politics. I was rooting for the Packers. And uh, get this, everybody in the Cowboys suite was rooting for the Cowboys. And so I had to hide my cheese hat in Porsche's purse. And um, don't get me wrong. I, I, I like the Cowboys. I love the Cowboys. I love all the village people, as a matter of fact. Um, but, but Aaron Rodgers is a friend of mine. He's the quarterback for the Packers. And so I, I'm sitting in the, in the Cowboys suite, the owner of the Cowboys, and secretly cheering every time the Packers scored or every time another whistleblower came forward. And uh, <laughs> the referees, you guys, the referees. Um, but during the game, they showed a shot of George and me laughing together. And uh, so people were upset. They thought, why is a gay Hollywood liberal sitting next to a conservative Republican president? Didn't even notice I'm holding the brand new iPhone 11. And, um, <laughs> but a lot of people were mad, and they did what people do when they're mad. They tweet. And, uh, but here's one tweet that I loved. This uh, person says, Ellen and George Bush together makes me have faith in America again. I'm friends with George Bush. In fact, I'm friends with a lot of people who don't share the same beliefs that I have. We're all different, and I think that we've forgotten that that's okay that we're all different. For instance, I wish people wouldn't wear fur. I don't like it, but, but I'm friends with people who wear fur. And I, I'm friends with people who are furry, as a matter of fact. I have <laughs> friends who should tweeze more. And I, I have, but just because I don't agree with someone on everything doesn't mean that I'm not going to be friends with them. When I say be kind to one another, I don't mean only the people that think the same way that you do. I mean be kind to everyone. Doesn't matter. There's a reason why Ellen DeGeneres remains popular. It's because she's the real deal. After she was criticized by some for sitting next to former President George W. Bush, DeGeneres used her monologue to set the record and her critics straight. She said, quote, I'm friends with George Bush. In fact, I'm friends with a lot of people who don't share the beliefs that I have. She got a round of applause when she added, quote, when I say be kind to one another, I don't only mean the people that think the same way you do, I mean be kind to everyone. Amen to that. And to you, Ellen, you do your hometown proud. All right, so Kenneth is saying Ellen is amazing. Let her be friends with whoever she wants. Timothy says love it. I think that uh, the thing that people had a hard time with was this just isn't two people who have difference of opinion. I know. People start bringing up things like war criminal yes, and that seemed to be stole a big the issue. election from Al Gore. Right. And there's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things uh, beyond the, um, the argument for, you know, friends with difference of opinion, because I do believe that. But if you could remember back to when George W. Bush was president. If we, if I told you at that time that Ellen DeGeneres would be on television defending her relationship with him, nobody would believe you. And it's incredible what a little bit of time, time. can do.
you know, and yeah. uh, and it makes you sort of fearful for, you know, how other people will be looked at in time. Yeah. Now, Peter's saying she's flexing her new iPhone, which is funny. Uh, Puff yeah. Sleeves kind of girl says great message. So I, I agree with you. I think the message is wonderful, but I don't know if that was the basis for what the concerns it was were nuts. for a lot of people online. It was not. Yeah. It's the fall of 2016, and unless you live under a rock, you've likely found yourself in the middle of a heated political debate. Nice outfit, by the way. <laughs> or doing everything you can to avoid one. That's right. Our latest research shows that where our t-shirts and front yard signs once proudly campaigned for the candidate of our choice, in this election, we're choosing to lay low and bite our tongues. Overall, people feel the 2016 election is more polarizing and volatile than ever before. One in three have been attacked, insulted, or called names, and one in four have had a political discussion hurt a relationship. And while our instinct may tell us to avoid talking politics at all costs, our latest research shows you don't actually have to go silent or become the victim of someone's verbal tirade even when your opinion is the polar opposite of theirs. Did you just say you could disagree with someone and still be friends with them? You heard me right. <laughs> Whether you agree or disagree with another person's political position matters much less than how you state your opinion. Those who used four simple skills to discuss politics were 140% more persuasive wow. and likely to stay in dialogue, and 180% more likely to stay friends long after the election. On the other hand, those who did not use the four skills were labeled abrasive, unlikable, and ignorant. And these labels held true even when the observers had the same opinion as the unskilled individual. Wait, did I hear you right on this one? <laughs> yep. Even when you agree, if you do so in a disagreeable way, you risk alienating friends and ruining relationships. So let's review these four simple skills and get you on your way to safe and productive dialogue no matter the tough issue. The key to successful political discussions is to make it safe for others to not only hear you, but share their own ideas. With that in mind, the first skill is to focus on learning. Frame your discussion as a chance to learn from each other, not to change each other's minds. Simply being curious about another's position is sufficient motivation to engage. But if you harbor a hope of converting the other person, you'll be tempted to become manipulative or coercive. Focusing on learning may sound like, I know what I think about immigration, but I'm curious about why you feel so differently. Would you be open to sharing your position with me? Second, ask for permission. After explaining that you aren't trying to change the other person's mind or attack their position, ask for permission to talk about the sensitive topic. Asking permission gives others a sense of control that reduces defensiveness. That may sound like, I'm not wanting a debate and I'm not trying to change your mind. I just want to understand. I see this issue very differently. Would it be okay if I explained my perspective? Third, show respect. Respect is like air. If you take it away, it's all people can think about. Others will not engage with you if they don't feel respected by you. Set the stage by over-communicating your respect for the other person and his or her opinion. Say something like, I value you and your perspective. I want to hear from you. I don't assume I'm right. And lastly, focus on common ground. Look for areas of agreement rather than disagreement. If or when the conversation takes a more dramatic turn, look for the greater principle governing both opinions and you'll likely find a mutual purpose behind your convictions. Say things like, I want to find the goals we share and then look at the issue with those goals in mind. Remember, you actually can talk politics with friends and still have some left. The key is not to agree or avoid the topic altogether. It's to use four simple skills to share your opinion safely.